if you could reverse in time, would you take the amount of supplements that you take currently? Or you would think that you're young, you're healthy, your body's taking care of itself. It's not necessary. I would have, I would take more than I'm taking than I took. <laughs> oh, wait, more than you took, but not more than you're taking now. Yeah. And can I tell okay. you why? Why? It's because the natural restorative, what is aging? I am convinced that aging is a decline in the efficacy of the natural restorative processes in our body, not in uh, the normal things, but in things like stem cell differentiation. Um, our, our blood cells turn over uh, every three or four days. We need new blood cells. Um, and there are multiple ways or multiple channels in which the body restores itself. And those mechanisms work beautifully till people are about, in, in, in every organism, across, uh, look across the entire spectrum of biological organisms, you find analogs of this. In, in human beings, uh, until you're in your early, late 20s and early 30s, uh, you, you are not subject to most of the things that kill older people. Hey everyone, I am here with Vince Giuliano. Vince is a follower, connoisseur, and interpreter of longevity research in his latest career since 2017. He believes that he's unique among the researchers and writers in the aging sciences community in one critical aspect. He personally practices the anti-aging interventions that he preaches, and that has kept him healthy, young, and active, and highly involved at the age of 93. He is productive as he was at the age of 45, and he doesn't know anybody else active in that community in his as active as he is in, in his age bracket. In particular, he's focused on the importance of controlling chronic inflammation for healthy aging, and he's written a number of articles on the subject in his blog. In 2014, he created a dietary supplement to further the objective. In 2019, uh, he started a supplement company, Synergy uh, Bio, Bill Herbals, Bio Herbals, uh, that is now selling the product. In early reincarnations of his career, he was the founding dean of graduate school and a university professor at the State University of New York, a senior consultant working in a variety of fields at Arthur D. Little, chief scientist at C00 uh, uh, and COO of Mirror Systems, a software company, and international internet consultant. He got off the ground with one of the earliest PhDs from Harvard in the field later beca be that became known as computer science because there was no academic field of computer science at the time. He had to qualify himself in the hard sciences, so many studies focused on heavily on quantum physics. In various ways, he contributed to the computer revolution starting in the 1950s, the internet revolution starting in the 1980s, and now is engaged in doing the same for the longevity revolution. He has published some 200 books and papers, as well as over 430 substantive entries in his blog, and has enjoyed various periods of notoriety. I am pleased to uh, have Vince today. Uh, like, like I mentioned, he's 93, and... He takes probably more supplements than me, believe it or not, <laughs> and uh, he lives a healthy life as well. So I want to get his take on you know, what he's taking, how many supplements he's taking, why he's taking them, how does he think it's helping him, and so on. Uh, so let's get started. How long have you been in this movement, let's say, uh, in the uh, longevity movement, the longevity revolution, as you call it? Well, as a, an amateur observer of it, um, most of my adult life, uh, but it was actually uh, 17 years ago when I was um, 77 that I said uh, I was ret 
retiring from a, a long career in the um, internet and in the electronic uh, aspects. And that's when I decided to get into it. So I decided to jump in full time. And that's what I've been doing now for 17 years. Wow. Okay. So 77, I mean, that's uh, generally a lifespan of, of the typical American. And you got into your longevity career after the average lifespan of a typical male American. So that's pretty cool. And so what were you taking, like, what were you doing before you got into this longevity revolution? Were you taking supplements at that point at all? Yes, I was. Uh, I started taking supplements, oh, maybe 40 years ago. And, wow. Uh, what what supplements were you taking? Well, uh, uh, something like 124 a day. Uh, and that, <laughs> You were taking 124 a day, 124 supplements a day 40 years ago. Well, no, no, 124 pills. So that's, oh, maybe, so it's, that's maybe 80 supplements. Um, well, it and, could have even been more because there could have been pills that had multiple ingredients in them. Yeah, you know? yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, and um, uh, that was one of the original ways I got into this field. Uh, and uh, I think the... Uh, supplements have been a very key thing of keeping me going as I have been going. Um, uh, whether they will last the entire uh, 234 years I intend to live, I don't know. Okay, uh, wait, let's let's stop for a second. <laughs> you started taking 120 pills 40 years ago. So you were at the time oh, no, 53. No, I started taking pills 40 years oh, ago. Oh, okay. Yeah. Really added them up. To oh, work. okay. So uh, as time went on, you kept on taking more and more. Yeah. What was the when you started taking pills? What 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 did you start with? Like one pill, or you started with ten? Like, tell us the progression of of how much you started taking and at what point. Well, the story was is is that uh, a certain year I was a consultant in Oak Ridge, Tennessee, in the foundation of the um, uh, whole movement of um uh, of ecology and uh, i was being paid on a daily supplement it was a summer program and uh deep in the cave uh nearby i felt that the ground and started crawling and i was diagnosed with hepatitis and everybody said okay you're gonna have to be in bed for two or three weeks to cure this up and i couldn't do that because i was on a daily thing and a pro rapidly moving program. So my wife at the time, um, I got a book by Adele Davis, uh, one of the first dietary uh, science gurus. And um, it said there, a massive dose of vitamin C could cure my hepatitis. So she went out and bought a big bottle of vitamin C. In two days, I was back in work. Uh, my doctor who diagnosed hepatitis uh, was completely dumbfounded. And that was how I got into the movement. Oh, wow. So the first supplement you started taking was vitamin C. Yeah. And then I started following um, Linus Pauling and the whole body of science about vitamin C. And I started getting more and more into the uh, both supplements and longevity at that time. Interesting. So back then, you were probably taking high dose vitamin C, I assume, for quite yeah. a bit. Yeah, I was part of the mega dose movement called mega dose, right? And yeah. it was more popular back then, I think, until they figured out that it causes kidney stones if you take too much by increasing the oxalates. Their problems, and um, yes, that's right. It was very popular back then as a monotherapy that would do all kinds of miraculous things. And do you still take vitamin C today? Oh, yeah. I take uh, uh, two grams of vitamin C plus a uh, liposomal supplement, which is high bioavailability that is a safer form of vitamin C. So you take uh, one gram. I'm looking at your regimen. You take one gram in the a.m., one gram in the evening. What do you think about the um, 
the argument that you can't absorb more than 200, 300 milligrams. Like your blood levels are not going to go up more if you take well, more than that. What happens is, is your, your kidney, your uh, liver comes along and says, hey, wait a minute, what's this dose of this substance that's coming in? And your liver starts purifying it. And you get liver toxicity if you take too much. If you go up to too high a dose consistently, your liver gets toxic, your liver begins to fail, and you're... Um, but, but is there a benefit of taking 1,000 milligrams versus 500 milligrams at a time twice a day? I, I think uh, vitamin C is a very important purifying uh, thing. I, I do think so. But is there is there a benefit to, of taking 1,000 milligrams versus 500 milligrams? Um, I believe so. Now, there, there are many things I know uh, because of research, hard research. There's soft research and there's gut feelings. This is somewhere in the category between soft research and gut feelings. That's it. Okay. okay. So... Uh, you you took this vitamin C and your hepatitis went away. Why do you think you got vitamin uh, hepatitis in the beginning? Uh, it was from eating a, a wonderful seafood um, in a uh, restaurant in New York City. That uh, it was uh, clearly a dietary. Uh, uh, it's it's one of the things that can come with seafood, raw seafood. Oh, to get hepatitis? Like you could get that from raw seafood? Well, one of the first is hepatitis, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And so you start taking this vitamin C and uh, at the age of 53 around, when do you, let's say, go up to 10 supplements a day or, or 10 pills or 20? I, it was sort of linear. Um, maybe by... Uh, I. First of all, one supplement is not going to do anything. We are the most complicated. Our bodies are the most complicated entities in the universe, and I'm including all kind of astronomical entities. Uh, uh, and one thing is not going to do everything we need for longevity. So uh, as I learned more and more and kept studying more and more, um, the next episode was um, I began getting uh, serious arthritis in my fingers. I could not bend my little pinky. At uh, what age? I, maybe mid fifties, and uh, and uh, I, I uh, my knees would have arthritis, and um, and. Uh, <laughs> I said to myself, hell, I knew how to clear up the um, hepatitis. Maybe I can clear the arthritis. So I started reading books because this was, this was before internet was there. And I read a number of books, each of which propounded a specific cure for arthritis based on a very traditional herbal substance uh, that countered arthritis. So I said, okay, I'm going to start taking several of those substances and quash my arthritis. So I did that. I identified four key substances, started taking them, and in um, three to six weeks, my arthritis was gone. I, wow. my, my rheumatologist said that's not possible. I said, well, it's gone. I, I, I don't have those problems anymore. I can move. Uh, and Do you uh, have arthritis these days or no? Pardon? No. Do I have one? Do you have arthritis these days or, or no? Oh, no, it's been gone since. Um, wow. And, and um, uh, so I was taking four herbal substances and then, whoops, uh, 15 years later, in my uh, early 70s, I think, my arthritis started coming back slowly and gradually. 
And I said, what can I do? And I found out that the bioavailability of my supplements was limited, again, by this liver factor and by the delivery factor, and that there was a very high technology approach I could take, which is a liposomal form, which is little nanoparticles embodying the supplement in nanoparticles. I started cooking this up in my kitchen, just for my own use. Uh, after I got on taking my own home brewed liposome with substances, the arthritis went away. Went away again. Can I uh, guess which substances those were? I would guess curcumin, boswellia, ginger, and um, I would guess fish oil, but I'm actually looking at your four herb synergy and it says ashwagandha. The fish oil is very important, but that's, that's also a, a very important for control of inflammation in the natural body substances. But you're right. Um, I, ginger, boswellia, um, curcumin, and ashwagandha. Uh, traditional, and books were written on this, and they've been used for thousands of years. And so um, I started using this in liposomal form. Eventually, all kinds of friends asked us to make it for them, and pretty soon my kitchen, uh, I was spending a lot of time in my kitchen brewing this stuff, and I decided to develop it as a commercial supplement, which is available now. Uh, okay. For herb synergy, and um, it works. So have my arthritis come back? No. Am I free of it now? Yes, 100%. So after you started taking the bioavailable, and the, the arthritis went away again at the in the in your seventies. Exactly, and it's been gone ever since. And along with it being gone, are all the highly inflammatory diseases of old age that kill people. Do you check your blood markers for stuff like HSCRP? Oh yes, definitely. CRP. What's your HSCRP? 0.9. 0. 0.9. Which is practically... Unheard of for your age? Un unheard of for my age. At my age, 99% of people have hyperinflammation. That is super inflammatory. So they're subject to all kinds of cancers, uh, to diabetes, to... Um, uh, uh, dementias of various kinds, all kinds of diseases of old age. So I bit a bullet that um, minimizes my uh, inflammatory thing, and I do it ever since. And if it works, if you had, to, if you could reverse in time, would you take the amount of supplements that you take currently, or you would think that you're young? You're healthy. Your body's taking care of itself. It's not necessary. I would have. I would take more than I'm taking than I took. <laughs> oh wait, more than you took, but not more than you're taking now. Yeah, and, and can I tell okay. you why? Why? It's because the natural restorative. What is aging? I am convinced that aging is a decline in the efficacy of the natural restorative processes in our body. Not in uh, the normal things, but in things like stem cell differentiation. Um, our, our blood cells turn over uh, every three or four days. We need new blood cells. Um, and there are multiple ways or multiple channels in which the body restores itself. And those mechanisms work beautifully till people are about, in, in, in every organism, across, uh, look across the entire spectrum of biological organisms, you find analogs of this. In, in human beings, uh, until you're in your early, late eight, 20s and early 30s, uh, you, you are not subject to most of the things that kill older people. 
you lead this blessed existence where you're really covered. And that's because biology wanted to cover us while we had kids, while we reproduced. Um, then it starts going downhill. And by the time we hit, uh, increasingly we're subject to the cancers and diseases and our vulnerability hits maximum susceptibility about uh, about uh, in our 70s. So that um, uh, this is the process where, um, okay, this is the background. Okay. And so let's say if you were 20 years old, since your body is working beautifully as you described it, would you take any supplements? What's your position on that? I would take damn few. And and that's No, why... but you, you wait, you say, wait, sorry, I missed that. You said you would take a, a quite a few? No, uh, damn few, very few. Very few. You would take very few supplements if you were 20. It would not be necessary because the natural processes of renewal are so effective and so continually effective that like 99% of young people, I wouldn't even be thinking of longevity. I wouldn't be thinking of what needs I need to do to keep me going. And what about that, something like LDL cholesterol? If you, you know, stuff like that builds up over time. There's certain kinds of damages that build up from a young age. Many, right? many, 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 hundreds of forms of damage on every biological level, on the cell level, the organism, organism level, the entire organism, the organ level, um, the, the systems level, uh, and the biochemical level, everything goes to hell as you grow older. And the key thing is we know why. We know why. And we have a good idea of how to reverse it. And that's how I'm going to get to 246. I'm not going to get to 246 on the basis of my supplements, but we know, I believe we can revert to that blessed condition that we had in our 20s when we didn't have to worry. Do you take uh, rapamycin? No, I don't. Why I not? Did. I did. Uh, I've experimented with many, many things, and I did for a while, but rapamycin is also um, a anti-immune system drug. And I found that uh, I got dental infections. I got sinus infections. Mm. Uh, I got minor infections when I took it, and I found that I don't want to do an immune system suppressant. Okay. It, it it has um, you know an, a life extending factor of ten fifteen percent. I'm looking for ninety nine ninety percent. I'm looking for a condition where the things that kill me are the things that kill people in any age: traffic accidents, um, uh, accidents of all kinds. Uh, um, uh, homicides in a bar, um, getting hit by a bus, uh, all those uh, things that are age independent that kill people. What about uh, what rapamycin dosage did you take? Um, I was taking a very low dose. I don't think you need to take more than three or four milligrams a day. You're taking it a day, three or four milligrams a day. I would take it for three or four days in a row and then lay off for two weeks. I see. Okay. I, I think, I mean, just, uh, I, I don't want to go into this too deeply, but I would say that taking that, I think you were may, you may have been taking too much, which is why you got certain infections, but I, I don't, I only started taking it. So I don't really know. Uh, I, you know, I might start getting infections and I might change my opinion, but just, I, I just based on what I felt, I felt that, you know, uh, I was taking one milligram a day for three days, and I felt that that was like enough for me. Uh, that's 
that's how I ended up, but I still got infections. He it, did. It, Interesting. It okay. Program a day. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's something that is, I, I think if I started to get infections, I would lay off of it as well. Right. So. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. And so once you stopped, you stopped getting the infections. Oh, yeah. Yeah. It was uh, clearly an immune uh, suppressant. Yeah. Yeah. No question. I mean, they give it for transplants. So uh, it's the whole thing is to that's suppress right. the and immune it, system. And it may not apply to you. It, it's maybe my particular constitution and vulnerability. I mean, there's tremendous variation between us as members of the species. Yeah, that's interesting. I, I, I'm, I'm still trying it. I want to see like what dosing schedule might be interesting for me. Did you feel any like you had more energy on it or any benefits like that? I did not feel energy benefits, no. Okay. That's really interesting. I, I think we have different systems because, first of all, I felt a lot of energy from it. So yep. when, when I say I feel energy from something, it's like if I don't take it in the in the morning right when I wake up, then I wouldn't be able to go to sleep at 11 p.m., which is kind of like my normal time, 11 p.m., midnight, uh, just because I have too much energy. So I just would not be able to go to sleep if I took it at you know, 12. I, I find myself doing other interventions besides supplements now that give me energy. For example, uh, 40 cycle um, stimulation uh, of the um, uh, of the uh, autonomous nervous system. The what? Autonomous what nervous system? Nervous system. Um, this device is called a neorhythm and uh, what technology it, does it use? P PBMS, which means it... PBMS. I put it on like this. I activate it with my cell phone. And for 45 minutes, it uh, gives electromagnetic pulses of certain critical frequencies. Uh, these are written up in my blog, by the way. There are several articles on... Is that, wait, is that pulsed electromagnetic stimulation, PEMS? Yeah. Or PEMF, pulsed electronic magnetic frequencies. But, well, it's pulsed electromagnetic stimulation. PEMS. Um, is that, the, that's the same thing as PEMF? PEMS, yes. Yeah. 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 Okay. But, it, but is that the same thing? Well, there's EMS, electro electromagnetic stimulation. That's what they give for depression in like mainstream. You, it, there's a, a whole variety of techniques that have been used for brain stimulation, for providing energy, providing um, awareness, providing awakeness. As a matter of fact, this little uh, coil here uh, is a coil of LED lights. Uh, it flashes at 40 hertz, um, 40 cycles per second when you plug it in. It just flashes. And, okay. And um, that, too, there's something about 40 hertz that uh, is great for stimulating awareness, awakeness, and being there in this. Right. So for 40 hertz is, is the, the same as what they use for binaural beats. That's very popular in binaural beats. But I looked up the device that you mentioned. It is a PEMF device. Just yeah. to be clear about that. Yeah. So it's pulsed electromagnetic frequency. And what do you say that you feel from that? You say you feel extra energy? Well, you, using the 40 hertz um, stimulus, I, I find uh, doing that every morning. With PEMF? You're saying PEMF using 40 hertz? That's right. But okay. using 40 hertz uh, every morning, um, which I did this morning, uh, I get to be really awake and alert and uh, uh, coupled with some nice espresso, I find myself as cognitively uh, highly functional. I can read really complicated stuff and I uh, either understand it or be in the delusion I'm understanding. I, and um, I, 
but there are other frequencies that stimulate other phenomena. The other thing is that when I do this... So when you put it on your head, you get more energy. Sorry to yes. disrupt. When I okay. use it for the 40 hertz setting on my cell phone, I do that. And it has a, a secondary effect, which is that I... Uh, I can go to bed very, very, I can go to sleep very, very quickly at night. I can conk out in one minute when I go to bed and that my overnight heart rate, very heart rate variability is very high and my heart rate is low. And you may know that HRV, heart rate variability, is a, a good indicator of um, general health and vitality. And you're checking that with your aura ring? I saw you had an aura ring there. Yes, sir. So what's uh, what's your heart rate and your heart rate variability from the aura ring? Because I have that as well. I also uh, use an Apple Watch. Um, uh, this morning, my heart rate was uh, ridiculously low, impossibly low for somebody my age, around 40 or 45. Wow, and your heart rate variability? And my, this one, I'm going to bring it up and I'll show you. Um, and my heart rate variability was something like 117, which is... 117? Wow, that's incredible. Okay, hold on there. I'm going to get these data for you. Um, 107, so just to... No, give, while you get the data, I can't see it on... No, let's see. My heart rate... Was, my variability was 111. I don't 111. know. 111. That's incredible. Just to give people a context of heart rate variability, it is a general measure of health and cardiovascular, how, how well your cardiovascular system works. And typically it goes down as you get older. Uh, every year that you get older, it goes down a bit. And so, you know, I, I've seen young people with a heart rate variability of like in their 20s and that that's that's a problem. So my heart rate variability is typically a hundred. Uh, I would say that's that's what it's averaging on my aura ring. Sometimes it's higher. Uh, I think the highest it was like one twenty five. But let me mention another device. The uh, near infrared. There are two key frequencies of near infrared that are bioactive. Yeah. I you know about near infrared devices. Oh, you better believe I know about near infrared devices. I've got a couple on my I've got a couple uh that I have right here actually. Hey, why is this not turning on? Okay. Here we go. Right. Right. I put this uh wherever you can put it on your brain. I, I had a knee injury, I just put it there. Put it on AliExpress, it was like ninety bucks. <laughs> yeah. Well I I have a belt. Uh uh, which you can get for 150 bucks on Amazon.com. Uh, of uh, infrared. I got this too, by the way. Check this out. Don't mind if I wear it, huh? <laughs> this is actually to prevent uh, male pattern baldness, but I don't think it's got the infrared in here. That's the only problem. So the red doesn't penetrate deeply enough. But I'll take what I could get. It's convenient. Well, there's a real paradox because the infrared stuff works and it works at the two key frequencies um, but its penetration of the skin is very little and I think what happens is that it activates mitochondria uh, in the skin and in the upper epidermis and that produces substances which affect your autonomic nervous system but um, but the infrared does penetrate. Uh, it does penetrate. If you put it on the skin, it penetrates the near infrared. It, it, if, if you look at the biology of it, the articles say that beyond four millimeters, that's to three or four millimeters, that's all it goes. I'll tell you why I think it penetrates. Because if I put it over here, like just on my forehead, or if I shave my head and I put it on my head, I'm definitely able to notice there's cognitive changes from the infrared. There's no question about it. Well, well, I'm agreeing with you. It right. works. It works. 
but I'm saying I think how it works is through uh, a, a paracrine effect, which means an, an immediate, it, it works on the upper layers of the skin and the epidermis, activates the mitochondrial, they put out signals that go deeper into the autonomic nervous system. Now, for example, um, I have a belt, uh, which is downstairs. I would have to interrupt to get it. Um, for years, um, starting about 15, 20 years ago, I, I started getting chronic lower back pains, really awful um, uh, conditions that um, I had to get on gabapentin and various things, and, and uh, uh, they were very debilitating. Um, uh, ever since, I, now, they, now every night before I go to bed, I put the sash on for 20 minutes of near infrared, and my back pains, lower back pains, have vanished, gone. Okay, so let's move on. Uh, quite interesting stuff. I want to move on to some of the supplements you're taking. And, and again, I want to ask a question that I, I kind of asked already. But if you were, I'm, I'm just trying to understand, if you were my age, I'm 35, chronological age, <laughs> uh, what, would you, what would you take if you were my age? Would you take the same number of supplements that you're taking now? No, but I would take um, a high availability DHA uh, and EPA fish oil, because I think that is um, a very important substance for neutralization of the um, uh, of, of, of inflammatory conditions. Do you um, think it's counterproductive to take it at a younger age, or you just don't think I'm going to live longer if I take it at a younger age, like now? Most of the second. You say because I I counterproductive. Oh, wait, or, uh, sorry, it, not it's just not going to help. Not going to yeah, help. It, no. it, 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 sorry. Uh, I, I don't think there would be any harm whatsoever in taking all the supplements I'm taking. Um, but uh, every supplement I'm taking, there's a reason for taking it. And um, um, uh, some of them have to do with a um, natural, very important uh, substance in cells that I've also written about extensively called NRF2, um, uh, which is something you want to activate because uh, it activates about 50 or 100 uh, genes that are very important for longevity and very important for health. Uh, okay. So uh, NRF2 activation, and um, those would include things uh, like um, uh, milk thistle extract. Pretty much every, like half of the supplements on your list in increases NRF2. I'm sure like ginger, alpha lipoic acid, um, there's, I'm just looking at your list, uh, like Half of these phytochemicals will increase NRF2 in some level or another. That's right. And I think increasing NRF2 is another very important thing. But I, I just want, would like to mention one thing, that most of the interventions I've been concerned with are ones to get me healthily and still functionally to 100, but that interventions and supplements um, that get me from a hundred into the multiple hundreds, if I can make it, are of a different character and uh, are uh, a whole different ball game. Namely, everything I've been doing work more or less at every age, but Aging is progressing. Um, and with aging, when you get into that final stage of beyond 77, um, you 
get this rapid increase in steepness of the mortality factors of numerous things that go wrong. Uh, your DNA is no longer being repaired adequately. Um, you have tr translocations and transmutations in the proteins you make, so they're not as effective. Um, your uh, stress proteins are not generated adequately enough. And so you really need something which slows or stops aging. You need okay. something. So and, at what age would you take the number of pills that you're taking now? It would it, like if you knew everything you knew now, would you start them at the age of 50? Would you start them at the age of 40, 60? Like what age would you start them? I, I would um, start them gradually as I did, but I would have increased the rate in which I added them in. Okay, I but many in earlier than I actually did. Okay. So, um, everything you're talking about with these supplements, the P PEMF devices, the infrared devices, uh, are going to help us get to 100. Uh, obvious factor, you're never going to make several hundred unless you make 100 first. So, it's highly relevant. <laughs> Some people ask me, I think probably everybody, because I take a lot of pills. I don't quite take as much as you. Um, and uh, I mean, th there's certain differences. Uh, the dosages are less in most of them as well. But some people ask me, what aren't you afraid of all the interactions with these supplements? Uh, my short answer is no. But what, what do you have to say for that? <laughs> well, I have the same short answer. And... <laughs> The, the, the reasons are that um, you've been uh, taking them for 17 years. <laughs> yeah, have negative effects. Well, and besides that, yeah. Positive, but not negative effects. Secondly, um, uh, there is damn little published research, uh, even though the big pharma industry is glad to publish anything it can get a hold of that demonstrates. Uh, the danger of dietary supplements. Uh, uh, there just isn't research to counter indicative. Um, what gripes me uh, is that if I, I have a medical prescription and uh, there's all kinds of contraindications and all kinds of side effects to prescriptions, but it says I should stop taking some supplements it's that I have to stop taking safe stuff in order to be able to take that unsafe stuff. But right. um, I should mention at this point that another part of my longevity regimen is to take full advantage of the medical establishment because it knows a lot of things about particular conditions um, and uh, to observe all kinds of other interventions that are conventional, but that each have a um, longevity impact. Um, for example, vaccinations, protection against uh, pandemics. And did you get a vaccination? Oh yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Uh, Three I doses, have... four. Four. <laughs> okay. And also against flu. So um, those... You believe things, in the flu vaccine? They're not very effective, though. Well, yeah, I, uh, I tend to believe the research that says that they are generally effective. Okay. okay. And um, uh, so taking advantage of all kinds of things that are life extending, um, which are all around us and we don't recognize them. Yeah. Have you um, ever done like mega dosing experiments with a given supplement? Like when you introduce a new supplement, do you do an experiment with that alone to see what is the acute effects of that supplement so that you know that 
okay, this is working for me. I feel better. I got more energy. My mood is better. Whatever metrics you want to check. Only very haphazardly because I don't want to. Um, uh, it's usually I am looking out for um, secondary impacts that may show in the aura ring, may show in how I feel, um, may show in my self perceived sense of awareness or may show up in things like my CRP score. But you're but you're looking at the global impacts. You're not looking at one thing that you're taking. You're you're taking 120 pills or whatever it is and you're looking at the global impacts to see am I overall feeling better? Are my blood tests improving? Is it, would that be a correct statement? Uh, that's correct. And, and 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 many of the pills um it may be that I don't need to take them anymore. For example, for years I've been taking uh, glucosamine and chondroitin for arthritis and chronic arthritis. And now that I've banished the symptoms of those with my dietary supplements, I'm still continuing with the glucosamine and chondroitin. Do I really need it? I don't know. I, I think but the glucosamine is a longevity supplement they they've done studies that show that people who take it live longer I mean do you believe in those studies oh yes I do I, I believe that that any substance that increases your health uh, will increase your longevity to some extent there are hundreds thousands of things you can do that give a little bit of incremental increase in your longevity okay right so do you think uh out of all the stuff you're taking what are like the top five things that you think is most promising well i have two reactions to that um i i i would say certainly the um Four herb synergy for the control of chronic inflammation is very, okay. very key. I would say the fish oil supplements. Now, what other supplements would would I add? Um, I would green tea. As, green tea, that's important. As very key impacts that can be seen in the Okinawan and other populations that consume large amounts of green tea. And um, um, probably good old-fashioned vitamin C or, or a multivitamin. Now, how long? One second. How long did your parents live? Um, all my parents in my father's line uh, died in their seventies. So, and my mother lived to 91 but she was completely invalid in a nursing home from her late 80s mm. no, so nobody no, nobody vaguely in my background history uh, has had um, my uh, survivability that's 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 really incredible that's what i want to know cuz you know if your parents both lived to 100 and you're at 93, and you lived 100. Well, it's still cool, but you know, um, obviously, you've got that genetic predisposition. Well, I I am thinking, Joe, of um, seriously of starting a new business. Okay, and what that business would be is uh, consulting, because I think there's uh, hundreds of things I do that have uh, maybe small impact, but contributory impact. People see me doing certain things. I'm not recommending that other people do them. I'm I'm just saying this is what I'm doing because I know about the body. And even myself, even though I know a lot, I think it's very important that you do frequent testing uh, as, as long as you don't have a stable regimen. So if you're adding things, if you're subtracting things, you need to make sure that you're doing a fair bit of testing to make sure that your kidneys are healthy, your liver is healthy, that you're not reacting in any strange way to any of the supplements you're taking or anything, any of the things you're doing. So I, testing 
Absolutely. It's super, super important. Yeah, sorry. I absolutely um, uh, agree with you. Yes. Yeah. So, and, and and that's why I've been, I mean, before I was probably on 30 supplements and I wasn't doing frequent testing because I already tested uh, frequently enough to know that there was nothing, you know, out of whack when I was taking 30 supplements. And so once a year was fine because I was, I was doing it for a long enough time. But once I started to really up the dosages of, or, or up increase the number of supplements, Right now, my goal is to test every three months or even sooner if possible, right? Even I would like to do it every week, but that's not feasible. So I'm trying to test as frequently as possible. That's also why I'm uh, leading a trip to India, by the way, that we can do all these tests because I think it's a good idea for other people. But uh, for me personally, I want to do as many tests as I can as long as my regimen is not very stable. And so this way I could see is my kidneys... And and all this stuff you can upload to self decode. So I've got on we I have a platform that you can upload all your lab tests, and you could see the whole history, how you're changing over time. You could take notes in there. You could see what's suboptimal. You could read a bunch of information on there. So it's an it's an incredible platform to uh, look at in terms of um, the lab tests. And one of the other things we have in the platform is your genetic predispositions for everything. So for example, if you have a high predisposition for atherosclerosis, you're going to want to pay more attention to your LDL cholesterol, to your LDL lipopro, uh, lipo, uh, lipoprotein particle numbers, your ApoB, things like that. And in addition, we also have uh, predispositions for every lab marker. So you could see if you have a higher predisposition, for example, like if you're predisposed to have lower testosterone or higher testosterone, if you're and that becomes really important for looking at your lab test to see is this if my predisposition is low and I have high here, that might be uh, something in my lifestyle that's changing it. And in my case, I've seen that every single situation where it didn't la- match my lab markers in a pre- in the present state of time, at some point in the past it did, and then something that I've been changing in my lifestyle has been changing it pretty dramatically. So. That's why it's important to look at your genetic predispositions, measure your lab tests as frequently as possible, upload them to a a software that you can track them over time and see are they moving in the right direction and and what is in the optimal or suboptimal range. uh, You know, this is a potentially a very important contribution. Would you mention again for me and for the audience here, uh, what the URL are of the self decode is. So it's self decode.com. Uh, I think you're really going to love it. Really. I'm, I'm, I'm being very serious. I think, uh, and as part of, as a podcast guest, we give you, uh, we give it to you for free. Um, but, uh, just as a, you know, just for coming on the podcast, it's a gift, but essentially I, I think you're really going to love it. It's, it's going to, it's a game changer because we're the only company doing polygenic risk scoring. So uh, every company doing the uh, consumer genomics out there is pretty much a scam, just to be very honest. Um, but we we actually spent a lot of time and money developing something that we want to uh, we're going to be introducing into the mainstream healthcare system. So uh, it it can't be it can't be a scam, of course. And and so the we have like tons. We've got 250 different kinds of reports on all kinds of different conditions, symptoms. Uh, lab tests, and then you can upload your lab tests. You can also see upload your symptoms to see what's increasing your risk based on your symptoms. So you get this kind of 360 view of your health, and whether it's through your genetics, your symptoms, or your lab tests, and you can track your lab tests over time. So that's the only reason why I go crazy with supplements because I have way more information than a random person. And I'm I'm literally tracking. I mean, I've been tracking my lab tests over ten years. And when you don't upload them anywhere, it's impossible to see what the hell's going on, right? Like when I uploaded them to Self Decode, my health took a massive improvement just because I was able to see. Wow, look how this is changing over time. Or I, I remember when I was, you know, I was on this diet at this time, and now I'm on this diet, and I was able to figure out so many things from that that I would not have ever able been able to figure out if I just got, you know, I got a PDF lying here, a PDF there. It would just take way too long. Now I just type in anything I want. 
HSCRP. I could see my HSCRP, how it's moving over time. And most recently, I took a HSCRP. It was 0.2. They said it was the lowest that they've ever seen. So if my HSCRP was going up and I'm taking all these supplements, I'm doing something wrong, right? I got to see, okay, which supplements can be increasing my inflammation, right? And so there... Uh, ba like I've I've seen certain things going in the wrong direction, and I did research what could be doing, what could be causing this to go in the wrong direction, and then I made the change. And so, super super important. I think what I'm doing, what Vince is doing, you could see us as, uh, like, you know, very like like professional boxers, if you will. If you don't know what you're doing, you're gonna get a concussion. You can get a concussion, or something something could be damaging, and I. I would recommend sticking with the more basic stuff, the stuff that not a hundred things, but maybe 10 supplements, 15, whatever, whatever you feel like you're comfortable with. But um, yeah. Could I add a comment of just to why I see this important? Yeah. Um, uh, every major progress in science that we've had, the detection of bacteria, the detection of planets, uh, has been associated with instruments that allow us to perceive beyond what our natural senses perceive. Um, uh, you see it today with the um, Hubble and the whole range of new telescopes are producing incredible new information about the galaxies. Uh, the scanning electronic microscope. The microscope originally is what put us in touch with bacteria and the cell structure. Uh, so instrumentation is how we are going to learn about things. And that this whole field of uh, human biology and of longevity has had a dearth of instrumentation, a uh, very little self-instrumentation. I agree completely that you can't, if you're not measuring things, if you're not, uh, and then you, you need the right in instrumentation as well. You need the right software. So you can measure something and then not know what to do with the data. That's number one, right? You could get a DNA. They were able to sequence your whole DNA in 2002. But if you don't know what to do with the data, it's worthless. You could go to your doctor, take a lab test. You don't know what that information means. It's pretty much worthless. And you're just relying on your doctor to say, yeah, you might die in a year because these things are completely out of whack. That's really like if you have a serious disease, cancer, like, yo, you've got heart disease right now. Or maybe they'll look at, you know, something like your if your LDL is completely out of whack. But what you want to do is really prevention. And you need to see if what's not in the optimal range. So. If you have an HSCRP of three, I don't know of any doctor that's going to mention anything to you, right? Like, but from my results, you can see that you could get it to zero point two. It's very doable, and I used to be uh, above one, and and you could see that Vince has zero point nine at the age of ninety three, which is which is incredible, right? Because again, it's something that could go up over time. So if you are not measuring, like, if you just trust your doctor, they're not going to tell you anything, like. They would have, I don't think they ever told anything to Vince, you know, and, and it, oh, you got arthritis, maybe you take this drug or whatever, and, and that, that's going to have a lot of side effects. You really have to take your health into your own hands to some degree, right? You have to, and, and so software is critical in allowing you to input information and then see it in a much more easy and simple way. The, the amount of work we put into the genetics, like, it's super, super complex because there's a tons of information. We analyze uh, 83 million SNPs, genetic variants, when we calculate all the different kinds of risks. And then we give, we prioritize recommendations at, uh, based on uh, certain genetic variants. And so uh, when you don't know what's going on, like I would say the genetics is kind of like a, a base because that has so much information. You could see pretty much any pathway that Vince's research, whether it's NERF2 or AMPK, or CERT, right? Uh, there's genetic pathways, there's genes that affect how those things function. And you could see, am I weak on NERF2, right? Am I weak on CERT1? Now that's more advanced to look at the specific genes, right? Somebody like Vince could do research on that and, 
And I would recommend that you do that, by the way. You look up uh, different genes and pathways that you're interested in. You could see what variants you have for all the different kinds of SNPs. But you could also see in a global way what your overall genetic predisposition is for you know, a whole bunch of different kinds of conditions. Uh, and that could also help you make wise uh, choices. Well, I would like to be in on your system, and I uh, will plan to look into it and get into it, Joe. Yeah, that's great. So uh, I think we should uh, definitely talk again. Uh, I think we're over time now, but I'll, I'll set you up uh, just, you know, um, but I think we, in general, we should talk again because uh, I feel like we have a lot to talk about. It's been fun. I feel like we can, you know, uh, I can learn a lot from what you're doing and we can exchange some good information. So I would definitely like to have you on again. And uh, yeah, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. And I'm learning from you too, too Joe. Okay. All right. Awesome. So, Hope you enjoyed this. Please subscribe. Please like. Please review. Whatever it is, YouTube, you like. iTunes, review it. And this way, I will do more of it if I see that people are really liking this stuff.